This video is a follow-up from my last devlog for this project. I'll try to be a little less rambly this time, jumping straight in. The next thing I did after the last video was to create a random course generator. It basically just recursively adds more course parts onto the end until a hole is placed. These are a few of the more interesting generations. and a few lucky shots I got while testing various features. What a cracking shot laddie. Blimey. Blimey! 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 Sometimes the generation went pretty wild. I then started working on some more advanced moving course parts. And of course, the physics were broken AF to begin with. Several improvements to the physics system later, I had this result. My model still had a few issues though. Blimey. It was a pretty simple and obvious fix, just a little sort of spout. I then experimented with other designs for course parts. I also added the functionality for different types of actual moving, not just spinning. Not to mention different rotation types, linear and sine. Here's some nice slow-mo shots, you can see the particle system working well here. Next I implemented a basic texturing system that allows materials to be given diffuse and specular or roughness textures. And created a new course part using a new material that alters the speed of the ball when it collides with the surface. Next I decided to create some graphics in Blender for the loading screens and the main menu. Most of the node setups are pretty simple as I'm quite new to Blender. I think it looks pretty cool though. Here's a few prototypes. Around this time, I created a way to load courses from files. I aim to make the fill type as readable as possible. Also during this time, I added tangents to the drawable meshes so that by tangents could be computed in the VS. This allowed me to create a tangent space transform matrix and allow me to implement normal mapping. All of the previously described features are in play here. You can see that the normal mapping is adding lots of apparent detail to the textured surfaces. All the course pieces are being loaded from the course file including scenery and the rendered logo is being displayed in the top left next up was a spline system for the camera it uses two splines one for the camera's position and one for its look at position both of which are created by calculating the midpoints between the given control points. It then smoothly interpolates between the calculated midpoints and the control points in between. This is some footage of when I was testing spline rendering and mouse picking.
I then improved the node movement by allowing them to be dragged along a plane whose normal is perpendicular to the view vector. I then decided to attempt to implement the marching cubes algorithm for the terrain. I've described this technique in 2D on my website, so if you want more info, it's available there. The logic from my Minecraft clone helped me quite a lot with this implementation, as I had to create a column system to split up the terrain into manageable regions. This is the first test I got working. Lovely broken face normals, columns don't have access to neighbors and no interpolation for edge vertices. Blimey. Firstly, I fixed the incorrect face normals caused by a silly cross product mistake. Then I gave neighboring columns access to each other's values, so that complete meshes can be generated. This looked pretty cool, but it needed to be smoother. Time for some interpolation. There it is. I'll leave some great resources I used for this implementation in the description. I created some spheres by changing density slash height values based on their distance to a given point. I also lowered the density of the scalar field to try and increase the performance. Cool looking result from shader compilation error. Some more weird results. Finally getting to something that looks more like terrain. It still needs a lot more work though. Early brush testing. Neighboring column meshes are not updated yet. Fixed column mesh seams. As happy as I was with this, I wanted the brush to apply at the surface the mouse is on. For this, I tested which columns the computed mouse to world vector intersected with. Ray axis aligned cuboid collisions. then tested against the meshes inside the selected columns. The closest intersect point is chosen for the brush position. I then worked on the remove, smooth and flatten brushes. The smooth brush is basically a 3D Gaussian blur on the selected data. The joys of integer overflow. I was still using the untate underscore t type for scalar field data. Some time lapse brushing. My first attempt at creating and using a 3D noise texture for my terrain. Improved, but still not perfect terrain texturing. I might attempt to create some kind of texture coordinate generator using a cube projection, but for now this 3D noise texture does the trick pretty well, even though it has noticeable seams quick show off of the coarse spline camera. Early versatile GIS system tests. Now the GIS system has dynamic transitions, button hover animations and is easy to set up and use. Pretty much all settings, including anchor position and unit types can be changed. Buttons can be given STD functions which are invoked upon clicking. 
This is a quick demo of the MUI for the course editing screens. More course camera editing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can.